Morning guys. Uh, it's a pretty decent day out today so far. Uh, first thing this morning I gotta go get grandma. She's ready to come out of the hospital now. Good news. Um, another thing. My truck, this thing is running like crap. I think it's because I don't have any cats. Or not cats, uh, O2 sensors on it. Uh, and she kind of needs them. But the weird thing is when this motor was in Beastie 1 over there, I never ran O2 sensors on it or anything. I didn't have cats. I had dual exhaust. I had dual 1 and 7 8 inch exhaust. That stuff right there. And uh, the only thing that's changed is when I pulled it out of there, I put it in here, I used a 2 inch crossover pipe in a two and a half inch and I shortened up the, uh, the intake on her. That's the only only stuff I did to the engine that's different. Yeah so that short ram I cut five inches out of out of that, uh, that pipe right there and I stoved that thing onto the end of her and yeah and then the crossover exhaust. That's the only difference. Um, I've also got a vacuum leak on this thing. I'm very much hoping I didn't crack like the intake or something when I uh, took her out or something like that. I'm going to be very upset if I did. But um, I honestly can't figure out why it's running like crap. Like just all of a sudden too, the past three days, um, <clears throat> you fire it up, it idles rough, it idle surges because of the vacuum leak, and then um, when you go to goose it, she friggin' bogs really bad and backfires like crazy. Um, I might pull out a couple spark plugs and see what they look like. Maybe it's just from starting it and friggin' uh, like starting it and stopping it and only driving a couple hundred feet. Like that, that might do it. She needs to go for a good run, that's for sure, but uh, can't run her like this. She won't run. <laughs> I'll probably make it like, I don't know, a kilometer from my house and then it'll friggin' backfire and die or something. So I gotta, gotta, gotta figure this out because I cannot drive it like this. And I'm getting a check engine light, but I have no way to check it because uh, this thing uses uh, Woo TD2 and I don't have that. I didn't uh, cut the plug when I got this motor out of the donor truck. I don't know. Maybe I'll pay a visit to the... Uh, Auto wreckers where I used to work and see if I could pick up a piece of exhaust with a couple O2s in it and uh, get that UTD2 plug. Yeah. Well, just got back from uh, picking Graham up from the hospital and now I need to diagnose this thing. I bought a new air filter for it because the other one I had was just caked. It's just coated in friggin' power steering fluid and friggin' dirt and mud and grease and crap and some. Well, I guess you can see through it, but it still probably wasn't helping the situation any. Um, but now, I gotta start the motor, and what I'll do is I'll use a propane torch, unlit, and I'll use it as a sniffer. My dad suggested that. What you do is you hold the propane tank, and you just go around anywhere, and where the engine revs up because it's getting like the, all the propane fuel and it'll burn that too um, but it'll suck in the propane and it'll run better and wherever it sucks it in you've got a leak so that's how you find vacuum leaks yeah well I figure it'll be a good last mission for this guy um, you guys might recognize this uh, propane canister from my very first videos I used it camping to blow the fire um, you know I'll put a link down to that video at the bottom so Check it out, it's pretty funny. But anyways, yeah, I'll start the motor and I'll just And wherever it revs up, of the leak. Hopefully, hopefully it's not cracked on the plenum or nothing. That would really suck. Barely run. Can't figure it out. 
figured out. I don't know where it's leaking from. Nowhere that I can really see. I'm having another haul, that's why I'm starting to drool. I don't know. I guess I'll pull the spark plugs and see what they've got on them. Maybe they got a bunch of oil or crap on them or something. Anyways, um, yeah, I phoned, I phoned my old work and talked to Sparky there. He's a really cool guy. Um, yeah, I said next time they get a Toyota in the shop, they'll cut the O2 sensors off for me. So that'll be good. Yeah, what I'll I'll get them to cut it right before and after on the exhaust pipe so that I can cut the uh, the bung off the exhaust pipe and weld it onto mine but the only thing is I don't know what to do about the post cat one because I don't have a cat all I've got is uh, the muffler so maybe I could put one before the muffler and one after the muffler but I don't know because I won't be giving it accurate readings from the post cat so I really don't know what to do well I just got the spark plug out it doesn't look too bad maybe it's a little bit white but just a tiny bit. It can't be uh, can't be bad spark plugs causing that, I don't think. Try to pull another one out too, see what that one looks like. Well the spark plugs, aside from being a little bit on the white side, look okay. They're not soaked in oil, they're not uh, not gummed up or nothing. It looks like they're they're alright. I don't get it. Urgh. You know, maybe it all is from the friggin' O2 sensors. So I'm gonna have to wait, because I got those things coming, but uh, it'll be later this week. I don't know. I don't know what to do. So whatever... Like, I have to have this truck done soon. Because I'm moving in three weeks. And I'm starting to get stressed out now, because this... I can't move if I don't have this truck. We don't have any way to transport any of our stuff. Yeah, it's stressful. Well, I just uh, prepped this uh, patient for surgery. Uh, just about ready to start the operation. Um, I cut the old drive shaft piece off about there and then I ground it down and just chiseled it off. It's right there. Uh, this one was a little bit more tricky. What I did is I cut through there as close as I could get it to there And then I had to hammer that inside ring out, which was a big pain in the ass but uh, I got it out and now all I have to do is press this guy Onto that end and then weld it and then uh, Bob's your uncle. Yeah Well, the operation was a success. Uh, I just need to stitch it up now, but uh, show you guys what I did. I Friggin pressed it on there with my press and then I stuck the drive shaft in I got an end for it and everything and Then I spun it and wobble tested it and I hammered it until it uh, spun straight It's just a hair out still, but that could be from that weld uh, It's about as close as it's gonna get so I'm not worried about it Yeah, friggin right so now I'll just clamp onto like onto the diff or something and then weld it and spin it. Friggin' right. And this uh, double cardigan joint, it reaches down to there, so that's that's just awesome. Like that thing's at a pretty extreme angle now, but uh, yeah, friggin' right. I'm stoked. Four wheel drive again. Then. What the, the, oh, I gotta get the motor running properly. Damn it. Well, I got it all welded up. Probably my worst welding job ever, but uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I'm gonna go take her out for a little romp and see what happens. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it runs better because I've let the computer reset for like, I don't know, friggin' three hours or something like that. So let's go see what happens. That looks sweet, actually having a drive shaft on the front now. Friggin' right. This thing is a tank. Holy frig. I just crawled up and over all this like it was nothing. I'll show you guys where I went up. <laughs> I started here. Crawled up over all these rocks and everything. All up top there and then over to there. This thing's awesome. It's gonna kill off-road. 
You know what, I'm wondering, maybe, maybe it's the fuel tank, maybe the filter's getting clogged up and it's not, uh, not letting enough fuel through or something, I don't know. Or maybe it's that fuel filter, because that's not a new filter, I think that was the one off this frame. So maybe it's that, maybe it's not getting enough fuel or something. Because I honestly don't know what else it could be, like... I just don't know, because really, like when I had it on Beastie, I was running a different fuel filter. I don't know if it's even still on here, probably not. No, it is. This is the fuel filter I was running on Beastie, and this one worked awesome. So I might, uh, well you know what, I'll probably just get a new one. But um, that filter screen on the fuel pump, I'm wondering if that might be causing this uh, bogging issue because like there was a lot of crap in that Ford tank so you know what if it's that friggin rights I, I really 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 hope it's something like that because that would not be hard to fix so I got spare fuel pumps just lying around like frig so I could just take this one and stove it into the tank and see if she runs better yeah. Oh, look. The wildlife. What? It actually would make sense that it's the fuel tank, or the fuel system that's causing all those problems. Because when I was in the field bombing around again, um, I turned a sharp left right after one of the water, the water stakes or whatever, and I friggin' bounced and slammed down and friggin' uh, caught some air off a big jump and uh, the fuel sloshed around in the tank and it was like uh, barely going so and it was the exact same thing that uh, was happening before so I'm willing to bet that the motor's not getting enough fuel well I'm feeling a little bit better about uh, the whole beastie situation now I'm pretty sure that it's the fuel um, anyways I'm heading into town now I'm gonna go see Susie and uh, also um, I've been watching a lot of preppers um, I'll, I'll put links down to the channels down below. Uh, check them out, they're really cool guys. But they've got a lot of really smart ideas and stuff like that about like preparing for like just worst case scenarios or like emergency situations and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is when I go into town, um, I'm just gonna spend 20 bucks and see, see how far I can stretch it with uh, deals and stuff like that and pick up some non-perishable food. Um, stuff like that, just try to find good deals and stuff, so, that way, like, well, I don't know, you can never be prepared for everything, but it's better to be a little bit prepared for, for some things than it would be to not be prepared for anything, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, um, yeah, so I'll see you guys out in town. Well, we got some kind of something going on here. I don't know what the heck's going on. Maybe they closed down Columbia and what they got going on is uh, they're rerouting all the traffic. <laughs> You're not going to get any more ahead, buddy. Yeah, it looks like that's what they're doing. That's when I drove by here earlier to pick Grandma up. They had uh, a bunch of construction crew and stuff going on. So I bet you they're just rerouting traffic. And that's uh, the main drag that they're rerouting too, so uh, it's going to be busy. Yeah. Wow, that guy is your typical friggin' punk ass ricer. He's friggin' driving like a maniac. Friggin', he's got turbo too, so he just flew past me. And then, uh, yeah, being an asshole. Friggin' right. Well, I uh, forgot to do another outro, so I'll <laughs> see you guys tomorrow. Take care.